Howdy, hello, and highlighters. Goodbye. It's time to talk about games. Start with the letter H. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murphy. Today, again, we're talking about games that are starting with H. We did G last time. We're going through the whole alphabet. Might have to smush some together. We get to like the we need X, it. J, Rage. Yeah. Who knows? We need to get this, this list sponsored by Sesame Street. We're already doing go. work. I'm there you saying. go. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're talking about our favorite games that start, in this case, with the letter H. And there's a whole bunch of really good ones. We, of course, won't mention all of them. We'll go over some honorable mentions at the end of the video. But again, if we miss any games, make sure to let us know down in the comments below. And let's go to get number 10. Number 10 is going to be a game called Histrio. This is a game that if you've watched this for a while, especially on our other channel, The Brothers Murph, we have evangelized this game for many years. This is a game um, where you are a traveling troupe of actors and actresses, but you are set in this um, kind of anthropomorphized animal world where you're all animals. There's like birds and, and rabbits and stuff like that. Uh, with wonderful Jeremy Fleury art, who has such, is such, such a good artist. I wish they did more games because it's just beautiful. But essentially what you're doing, this is a simultaneous selection game where every round there's going to be certain, um, certain players, certain, you know, um, actors and actresses, and then different acrobats at one of eight cities. And you're going to secretly choose which one of those you want to go to. And you want to be the only person who goes there because then if you do, you get to get those players. You get to get them and they kind of go then into your troop. And um, if you don't get them, they're all gonna get discarded and you will get some stuff for that. But what that's mostly gonna do is switch out the king's mood. There is a big old Lion King and that Lion King can't make up their mind. They either want a comedy or they want a tragedy. And throughout the game, you're gonna be discarding cards and doing things because uh, doing things to alter that mood. Because at the end of the round, the king will either want a comedy or a tragedy and you want to have one of those plays. You essentially want to, if they want a comedy, but you have a majority of tra tragedian, tragedian actors, then you have a tragedy. So you're constantly trying to manipulate the king's mood to most properly suit what your truth is. If you're all about comedy, you do not want them to want a tragedy. It's super fun. I love simultaneous selection games. It's got a lot of like, for being a relatively simple game, it's got a lot of intrigue and a lot of little things to think about. A lot of like getting into each other's minds to be like, oh, I think they're going to go here. So I'm going to go there too, to try and push the, um, the King's mood all the way over to comedy. Cause I have a comedy and they have a tragedy. There's lots of different stuff. Great art. It's a wonderful world. We really enjoy it. Number nine for our H games is Honey Buzz. This is a game where you are bees who have mastered uh, the the art of an economy, really, and and a speculative a sort of speculative markets or supply and demand. Anyway, so in this game, you are different bees building out a hive. It's ultimately you're drafting these tiles and placing them, trying to create these empty hexagonal cells. Once you create one of those by placing out your different uh, hexomino tiles, you get to do all of the actions that are surrounding that now empty space. So each of the tiles will have one blank space, one with an icon. So you kind of want to balance how and when you get all those icons lined up and create that cell so you get to trigger them all in whatever order you like. And you're ultimately trying to uh, do foraging to get uh, you know these flowers and, and nectar back to your uh, hive where it can start producing uh, honey to then sell and stuff. There's contract and or, you know order fulfillment, I should say. Uh, where you can turn in certain types of honey and pollen and things like that to sell to all the other animals uh, in the woods. You kind of have discovered that rather than having bears come and attack your hive, just sell them the honey instead. <laughs> and you get points and things uh, for, you can sell straight to the market. You have a whole bunch of one type of honey you can sell for the current market price. And then that market does drop down in value because now you've flooded it with, with sweet, delicious nectar. So uh, this is a game that has like amazing, incredible art. It's just so beautiful and colorful and lush kind of feeling. And the kind of way that you activate actions, the way that you build out those tiles and create those cells and when the timing of all that is ultimately really uh, interesting and fun while keeping a game that's fairly light. You know, you those the 
fulfilling those contracts and stuff isn't particularly difficult, but it does take some thought and some planning to get into. Uh, but I like that you can also sell right to the market if that's more beneficial for you. And you ultimately wanna have the most uh, money or woods bucks or whatever they call it uh, to win. So that's number nine, Honey Buzz. Our number eight is a game we love to play with our siblings, our brother and sister. There are four Murphs, by the way. It's a lot when we're all together. But now we like to play Herbaceous, which is a wonderful, wonderful, light, quick game with beautiful Beth Silva art where you are trying to make a little herb garden. There is a community garden, and then you have a private garden. On your turn, you're gonna do these two things. You're gonna draw a card off the top of the deck, and that could be like saffron or basil or whatever. And you can either choose to put it into your private garden or put it out into the community garden. And then whatever one you choose, let's say I put it in my private garden, you will then draw a second card and then wherever you didn't place it for the first card, you then have to place it in the other spot. So if I played the first card in my private garden, I have to place the second card in the community garden. I do not have a choice. That's what you do on the, your turn. For the most part, there's one other thing you can do and that's a very important part of the game, but that's mostly what you do. You're gonna draw a card, you either put it in the community garden or put it in your private garden, you draw another card and then you put it in the other spot. That's pretty much it. And you're basically doing set collection with these herbs because the other thing you can do on your turn is before you start drawing cards, you can choose to pot some of the herbs. You have four containers and those containers are gonna want certain things. One container is gonna want all of the same kind of herb. One is gonna want all different kinds of herbs. One is gonna want a bunch of pairs of herbs. And then the third one is gonna want these three specific herbs. So you can only put those herbs in there but you can only pot each of your things once in the game. So if I choose to pot four basil in there, I then can't add more basil later on. That's it, that pot is full, it's done. So there's always this like, oh, when do I do it? And the decisions are really tough and juicy because when you are potting herbs, you can pot them from your private garden and the community garden. So if I'm potting saffron and I have two in my community, my personal garden and then there's three in the community garden, I will grab all five of those and put those into that pot. So there's also this tough, tough decision of like, mm, there's two in there, there's two in the community garden, do I do it now? That's only, that's only four, that's not the best, but like, should I do it right now? Because like, if I don't do it, maybe Mike will do it on his turn and then I go, okay, I'm not gonna do it. And then I, and then I do my stuff and then Mike goes, I'm gonna take these ones and I'm like, Oh, I needed those. And it's just so brutal and fun. It's so simple. That's the whole game. You're potting these herbs. They will score differently, like I said. You can choose to pot or not, and then you're gonna draw two cards and put them in either garden. That's it, that's the whole game. It's so good. It's so easy to teach, so easy to play, so many great decisions. Herbaceous is amazing. Number seven is Hansa Teutonica. This is a game that we actually kind of just tried recently for the first time. We got the big box edition. Uh, and this is a game where you're kind of merchants trying to uh, increase your reputation in the land by setting up trading posts all over the map. And you're gonna kind of do that by creating uh, connected cities and, and having kind of your uh, pieces on the route between those. And you get to take one about and put them in kind of establish a trade post, uh, you know, to kind of, influence your, you know, the people around you, I'll say. Uh, this is a game that we really enjoyed because it's dead simple to kind of get into. It's a very kind of low rules, high strategy game. Like the, the nuts and bolts of how a turn works and stuff are not overly complicated, but there are a lot of ways to kind of mess with people, uh, uh, you know, gain favor, you know, get a bit of an edge. Uh, and there's even kind of like a, say engine building or a building up of actions. So the actions you do become stronger. You can even literally take more actions on a turn as you kind of build up. So this game gives you a lot of fun things to do while having super snappy turns. Cause a lot of time you're just putting out a, one of your uh, pieces onto one of those routes and stuff in an effort to connect, you know, complete, I'll say those routes uh, to those connected cities and trade posts and things like that. So this is one that just goes by really fast. It's kind of in your face and stuff, but it doesn't feel cutthroat per se because it's kind of so fast. The nature is that you're going to displace people and get in their way and things, and they can always displace you back if they're willing to kind of pay those extra resources. So this is one that we haven't even had a chance to explore like all that's in the big box and the kind of different maps and things, but one that we're really excited to try because it is really kind of easy to get up to speed and into, that's Hansa Tuchanika.
Number six is becoming one of my favorite solo games, and this is Hoplomachus Victorum. Hoplomachus Victorum is a big, big game by Chip Theory Games, and they are, this is a big solo game. It's a humongous game that is solo only. You cannot play it any other way. And I'm always intrigued by big games that are solo like that. And Chip Theory Game kind of is like, succeeds on the back of a lot of solo gamers. Like a lot of people play Too Many Bones solo, Cloud Spire solo. So this was kind of when they, I think when they came out, they said this is kind of like an homage to the solo gamers who have kind of made that company what it is because so many people love their game solo. And Hoplomaku Victorum is that. This is a game where you're gonna have some kind of hero from one of the, I think, eight different regions, um, like Atlantia or something like that the new Argonauts, whatever, in Vesuvius. And you're gonna take that hero, they're gonna have special abilities and they will kind of grow and change over time. And then you're gonna be basically doing a whole bunch of different encounters and going around this the regions of the world and doing different encounters. There are bloodshed encounters, which are just gonna be like, it's you and whatever troop you have and you're trying to take out the other team. That's it, you're trying to kill them, they're trying to kill you, that's it. But there are also these sporting encounters where there's like capture the flag, king of the hill, and a, uh, not a duel, a, a skirmish? I can't remember what the last one's called, but nonetheless, and those ones are a little bit different, where capture the flag, you're not necessarily trying to kill anybody, you're trying to go grab the flag chip and bring it over to your side and then you have capture the flag. And I really like this game because ultimately the ones where you're really fighting, the bloodshed events, the kind of big battles are, the meat of the game, but I really like having those other sporting events because they just change it up. If it's always the exact, more or less the exact same, each encounter you're gonna draw a card which might change up the rules. It might be like everyone has plus one range and that can really change up a game. So those do change up things, but nonetheless, it can get kind of samey. So I really like all these sporting events because they just change it up. Sometimes like, oh, I'm gonna go play King of the Hill because it just feels different. But ultimately, you're playing over three acts, and at the end of each act, you're gonna have to go to a certain region to fight the Primus, kind of the hero, the champion of that region, which is essentially gonna be a bloodshed event that's bigger and harder. And then at the end of the fourth act, I believe, uh, is you're gonna fight the Scion, the big Scion, one of uh, Pluto's great beasts, usually. And that's gonna be a really big fight, and you need to win that fight to win the game. I really like Hoplomachus Victorum. I actually think for a chip theory game, which, ten which tend to be very complicated, almost too much so in my opinion. I think Hopmaka's Victorium actually is a relatively good entry point. It's still a lot, don't get me wrong. Um, but for a chip theory game, I actually think it's one of the easier ones of theirs because it's kind of straightforward. Um, but I really, really like it. It's, it's literally have been, has been sitting on my kitchen table for about the last month because I've just been playing a little bit every single day. I'm really, really enjoying it. That's Hopmaka's Victorium. Number five for us is gonna be the Horrified Now series of games. There are three of them. We just recently tried Greek Monsters. There's also American Monsters and the original Horrified, which features the like Universal Movie Monsters, which is super cool. Uh, this is a uh, cooperative, ultimately pick up and deliver game. You are gonna be having items that are gonna be getting uh, put out onto the board into various locations. And those items are going to be used uh, for their strength and their color at different points to, uh, kind of solve the puzzle of a monster that you are dealing with. You're gonna be fighting against two or three at a time, depends on how kind of difficult you wanna make the game for yourself. And each of them is gonna need basically certain types of tiles to be turned in, whether it be for a combined amount of strength or certain color combinations, uh, in order to kind of progress their, uh, again, their mystery, if it's like the cryptids of American monsters, you're trying to kind of discover uh, and, and prove the existence of these cryptids. Uh, and then you kind of go down in the second half, once you solve the first half, you have to kind of go and confront that monster, which will, again, will often require you to turn in certain tiles in a certain location or at the, lo the monster's location to vanquish them or defeat them or run them off uh, and things like that. So I like that it's cooperative. It borrows kind of a lot of DNA from a pandemic type game where you're gonna have action points. You can use those to move around the map, pick tiles up, drop things off and kind of progress the mystery or story of a monster. Uh, things like that. So it's not too difficult to get into. Everyone's working together so we can talk strategy openly. Uh, everyone has a little bit of a uniqueness to their character that no one else has. So there's a little bit of that player power. Uh, and it's just got fantastic art, fun kind of accessible level puzzles uh, and just cool themes like monsters are have been around as you see with the Greek monster set forever. Like we've always told stories of monsters and things. It transcends time. It's a universal 
uh, kind of concept. And so it's really fun to set these games now in different, uh, with different groupings, I'll say, of these monsters. So uh, all of them have that same great DNA. Uh, take your pick, we have them all, we like them all. Uh, Horrified is just always a really fun experience. Number four is a tiny little game called Hanuma Koji. This is a two player I split you choose game. And if you've been around, you know Mike and I love I split you choose games because they just create so much beautiful tension. Hanuma Koji, um, you, there are a bunch, there are seven different geishas. Um, and these geishas, you want to come to your restaurant to entertain the people there with music or writing or singing or things like that. Um, and so there are these seven different geishas in the middle of the table, and you want them, you're essentially trying to get their favor so they come to your restaurant. You're gonna do that with these different cards, which again, have those same geisha on them. And the geisha have different numerical values. There are, I believe, three that have two, two that have three, one that has four, one that has five. Yep, that's seven, that's right. And so for each of those, for each of the two geish, level two geishas, there are two of their cards in the deck. For the level five geisha, there are five of those cards in the deck. You will have a hand of cards and the start of your turn, you will draw a card and then you will have to do one of four actions and you can only do each action once and you will be required to do all four by the end of the round. So one of them is that you're gonna take two of your cards, um, it, you're gonna take all four of your cards and you're gonna make them into two pairs. So these two and then these two and then you have to offer them to your opponent. They're gonna choose one and then you're gonna get the other one. You can also do one where you put out three cards, your opponent will choose one, and then you get the other two that are left behind. You can take one and just secretly keep it. You just get to save it. And then you get to take two and you just throw those ones out of the game. And what you're trying to do is get the majority on each geisha. So if you have the, the orange geisha, which is three, if I have two threes, two of the orange threes, and Mike has one of the orange threes, I have then gotten the favor of that geisha and she's gonna come to my restaurant. What you're trying to do is get four of the geisha to come to your restaurant or 11 points of geisha. So if I get the five and then the four and then a two, that's 11 points and you can win that way. It's so difficult because you're constantly having to offer your opponent cards and you don't know what's in their hand and you might be giving them exactly what you want. And there's so much sacrifice in this game of like, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up on five. I'm gonna give up on five and I'm gonna try to do a bunch of these like lower geisha right here and try and get four of them. Hopefully Mike doesn't get to 11 points and it's so tough. But where it gets really, really hard is at the end of the round, someone might not have won. And so everything stays and you shuffle up the cards and you go again, but the favor stays where it is. So now you have to try and keep the ones that you have already and also try and steal the other ones. It's so tough. It's so good, it's so brutal, tiny little box. It's really, really great. I love Hanuma Koji. Number three is High Society. This is from Reiner Knizia. This is a uh, kind of an auction bidding game where you are gonna be bidding for, you're trying to have the fanciest life possible, basically. You wanna have the fanciest life possible, show that you throw money around, uh, but without actually going broke. You don't wanna be the poorest at the table. That's not, not good form. So what you're gonna be doing is basically bidding on various fancy items like some dressage. You know, you wanna invest in a horse or getting jewelry or going on these vacations and things and, uh, and stuff like that. And you have a hand of cards that represent the francs that you can spend. The thing that's kind of tricky is that you can't make change with anything. So if you wanna combine two cards to get a total value, you can't then retrieve any of the cards that you spend if you win the bid. Uh, the only person who spends money is the person who wins the bid often. So you wanna get rid of your money, you wanna get these cards because they're the things that are worth points in the game. But if you at the end of the game have the least amount of remaining money in your hand, it doesn't matter how many points you got, you are out because you are now poor. And in this polite society, that is the worst sin of all. <laughs> so you want to thread that needle of spending money, getting those big ticket items. There are special cards out that come out and double the score you have and things like that. So you really wanna go for those. There's also negative cards where there's kind of an anti-bid where when someone takes the card, they don't have to pay anything, but everyone else who made bids 
uh, has to basically pay. They'll pay money to not take something. So uh, there's kind of that those cards that fold in and change the, the, the feel and flow for a moment of the game. It's super simple, uh, really fun, just a handful of cards, and you can get really into the kind of role playing of it, which we always uh, laugh about pretending to be these fancy people. So that is high society. Number two is a big Uwe Rosenberg farming game, shocker, and this is Hallertau. We love big Uwe Rosenberg games. They're one of our favorites, especially ones that are based around farming, because <laughs> we live in LA where we are constantly farming. Um, and so we uh, love Hallertau. Hallertau is one of the newer Uwe Rosenberg games, came out a couple of years ago. And this is a uh, worker placement game, again, shocker, uh, where you have these very thematic blue cubes that are your workers. And there are a whole bunch of different actions out there. And each action essentially can be used three times. The first time someone uses it, they will put one worker on it, one cube, and they will get to do that action. If someone else wants to use it, they can go there, but they have to put two. The third person then could put down three, and then that action is done. But throughout the game, um, workers will come off of those actions, so they're not gonna be done for the rest of the game. And essentially what you're doing is you're farming. You are, you are getting crops and you're seeding those crops into the ground. Depending on where you put them on your board, they will essentially uh, harvest you more stuff because you have different fields and the fields will kind of go up in soil value or down in soil value as they get degraded. So if you put a, a, you know, a hops or whatever in a field that's at level five, the top level, when you harvest that at the end of the round, you're gonna get five hops. If you put it in a one spot, kind of gravelly earth, not very rich in resources and nutrients, it's only gonna get you one. But once you harvest it, the, every field is going to degrade one because you've taken out some of the nutrients, right? And you're then basically, once you are putting all this stuff out, getting sheep and stuff like that and getting milk, and you're essentially getting a whole bunch of different resources, because at the end of the round, you are essentially trying to build out the community center, Stardew Valley style, kind of, not really, but you know, why not? And essentially there's a whole bunch of these different industries, like, like a butcher and like a, you know, a, dairy place and you essentially have to turn these resources to move these buildings to the right once you've moved all the buildings to the right one spot your whole community center will move with it and what that's going to do is that is then going to get you more and more um, workers but then over time throughout the game it's going to start revealing points and those are going to be end game points so that's mostly what you're doing is you're getting all these crops getting the resources and then turning in those resources to move these buildings to shift your community center to hopefully get a ton of points. There's also a ton of cards in this game where you can um, kind of like objective cards that you're going for where they might give you like permanent bonuses or they might give you like ongoing, like every round you're now gonna get one meet just for free. Um, some end game scoring ones. It's really, really fun. Typical Uwe Rosenberg style. There's like 18 different decks. So there's a whole bunch of different cards. I really like Hallertau. I think it's one of the prettier Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg games. Games, and I just think it's really fun. Number one on our list is Lahab. Now I know you're saying, whoa, that's an L, but La is just the, and the never gets counted for alphabetical purposes. So we're just gonna go with Hav, if you must. Lahav, uh, being the H <laughs> there. Uh, Lahav is a fantastic Uber Rosenberg game. Um, probably my second favorite overall of his. Uh, it's so good. The thing we love about this game is the turns are quick and simple. You can either, when it's your turn, take, well, there's these various lots, essentially, that are getting populated with money and different types of resources. You can choose one of those and just take everything that's there. So you can take all the wood or all the fish or whatever it might be, or you can move your disc to a building, whether it be yours and opponents or the towns, you might have to pay if it's in opponents or the towns, to make use of that card's action, which is going to be converting resources into more valuable resources or turning in resources for money and various things like that. You are uh, having to feed your people in this one, so you gotta make sure you keep up with that, but you can also build ships, which is a big part of the whole kind of economy of the harbor area. The more you have ships, the more kind of food you have coming in that you don't have to work to produce. You've already kind of done that. They're out there fishing and doing stuff like that. And you can also later in the game start shipping goods uh, for money, which is ultimately your points in the game. You can build various buildings, which is really cool because you have access to those buildings for free. And if other people want to come use your buildings, they block you from using it until they move, but they might give you some food or money along the way. So there's just a lot of fun stuff to explore. Uh, trying to keep your people fed, trying to get these resources produced and upgraded as best you can. But the turns themselves are really quick, ultimately very simple. The cards list out exactly how they work. It's just one that we keep coming back to, even though it's 
many years old now, uh, 15 years old, I wanna say, uh, it's just still so good and holds up so, so well. That is Lahav. Well, that was a heckin' good list if ever I saw heckin one. Good. That's one of my favorite things. Oh, heck or heckin'. heckin' I heckin' love this yeah, game. Heckin' love it. Those are some things. H games that we love. A couple of honorable mentions, because there are obviously so many more than we named. Yes. Uh, Hadara is one. It's bumping track goodness with yeah. kind of Civ theming. I cool really want to play with the expansion. Me too. Me I too. feel like the expansion might have bumped it back onto this list. Right. We just haven't know? tried that yet. Uh, sure. You've also got Hey, That's My Fish, which is like getting redone by Plan B. It's going to be all like really kind of got some quality of life upgrades and things. I'm really excited for the new so those one. Those are some honorable mentions for for us, but that of course, again, is not all the H games. So in the comments below, tell us your favorite games to start with the letter H, especially if we haven't mentioned them, put them down in the list so people can check out all the more great games. Yeah, indeed. So that's gonna be it for us. My name's Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Buzz Murph. We'll see you later, everybody. Bye.